Hey guys, welcome back or welcome if you're new here. My name is Randy and in this video I'll be walking you through my morning journaling process. I know this is my second journaling video, but I promise you I'm not becoming a journaling account. I just wanted to get this video up to help anyone who is embarking upon their own journey with journaling. Or maybe you've already started your journey for the new year, but you're kind of starting to fall off course. Whatever the case may be, I'm glad you're here. I know for me personally, I've always wanted to write daily and keep a journal, but it wasn't until the end of last year that I really integrated that practice into my routine, and it's finally something that I do on a daily basis, and I really enjoy it. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know I'm a broken record talking about how I set way too many expectations for my past self with journaling and planning. Specifically with journaling, I'd go into it expecting a completely filled notebook with daily entries, never skipping a day, and the writing had to be poetic and moving and profound and intelligent. And if it wasn't, what's the point? Like, wh why continue? Why even try? Um, I'd try to set hard, fast rules about the kinds of things I wanted to write about, and it took years to realize that just because your favorite journaling YouTuber, who literally writes for a living, talks about certain aspects of their practice, it doesn't mean that I need to set those standards for myself. Our intentions are different, we're completely different people with different stories to tell, and now my only rule with journaling is that there are no rules. I know, look, gag, but I'm serious. I'm just doing what's comfortable for myself, and that's messy handwriting, journaling in bed or the couch, or wherever is comfortable, and keeping these pages private. Unless it's like this moment where I'm trying to share it <laughs> to give some insight um, to the practice as a whole. But anyway, um, okay, I think I've preached long enough for this intro. Now I'm going to share what I actually wrote during the session that you're watching. Lately, I've been writing a stream of consciousness every morning. It's mostly nonsensical squirrel talk, but before I got really comfortable with streaming and maybe for the days that I just don't really feel inspired but I, I still want to write, I use prompts to help me out. Whichever route I go, I always date the entry and start it off with a greeting and the time. These are just things that get me into the swing of writing and I don't really consider them to be rules. Okay, so here we go with the entry. Buckle up. It's... Mm, yeah, let's just, let's just go. Hello, good morning. It's 5.45 and I'm so friggin' sleepy. And my handwriting went a little off the rails there because, oh, I'm recording this morning's journal session. Boy, this is gonna take a lot longer now that I'm recording, but that's okay. Hmm, I wonder, one, if I should end up doing a voiceover with all that I'm writing in here? Maybe. Two, if putting the sweater on was an absolute mistake. Phew, I'm sweating. Um, anyway, we went to bed at 8.45ish last night, physically and hygienically ready for bed. Also, just paused to take my sweater off. Um, yeah, ready for bed, but I didn't actually sleep until 9.45 because I was reading in bed. Rereading Ugly Love. And I know this book doesn't get a whole lot of love and is pretty poorly rated for the writing. And I get it. It's awkward and cringy and just not very good for a lot of people. But during this reread, I realized that's what makes it so good. Tate is a 23-year-old girl who hasn't had a lot of experience in dating and just life in general. She's young and her thoughts are unrefined and quite juvenile and scatterbrained and immature. But... I mean, what about me at 23? Man, she was just the same if not worse. No one would want to get insight into what the heck was going on inside my head, and I wouldn't allow it. And to be honest, I don't think it's any better as a 26 year old. Eh, maybe. Mm, anyway, 
Miles's bits are told from the perspective of his 17 and 18 year old self. He was literally a child. He was young and juvenile and all the weird, uncomfortable things people describe his parts as. You're gonna love me, Rachel. Oh, Rachel. All of that. You're telling me you haven't had thoughts like that? And the way his part is formatted as choppy lines aligned in the center. From the first few pages or lines of meeting Rachel, he said something about her read like poetry. Most high school students have a very limited understanding of poetry. So while yes, his pages and thoughts aren't the most well written, maybe that's just the best he could do to convey poetry. Take a shot for every time I say poetry. And for the parts where he's a 24 year old boy, he's just that, still a boy. An inexperienced lost boy, still clearly traumatized by the events that happened six years ago. And while he has grown up a little and aged physically and mentally, emotionally, he's just a boy and Tate's just a girl. And I'm rooting for them and their squirrely girl brained thoughts and actions. Thank you, Colleen Hoover, for giving us some very ordinary characters. The girl that I'm thinking of that takes issue with this book and its writing has read It Ends With Us and is probably comparing it to that. But like, not every coho book will read like her greatest romance novel and possibly the greatest romance novel ever written. Anyway, um, I think that's all I want to say about the book for now. I think I'll probably finish it today, but maybe not because I have quite a few things to do today that are on my list, so who knows. Bleh. Remembering I brought my coffee in here and I haven't even taken a sip of it. Be right back. I need to reheat that. Oh, I was thinking last night that maybe I'd go to a coffee shop today to get a latte and maybe sit down to catch up in my journal, the Hobonichi cousin. Maybe I should have said planners or just books because all of them could use some work. And it sounded like a fun idea since I don't have my iced coffee, but I don't know, don't really need to. And I told all this to John and he was like, I could just make you a coffee in the morning. And I laughed out loud at myself because yeah, he could and he did. And it was sweet of him. And also this coffee is delicious. Gah. Wait. I'm nearing the end of my session and just remembered. I need to sleep at 10, not any time sooner. Weird and bizarre dreams happened before then and the legacy continued last night. I was in college, the building looked just like my elementary school but it was a college lecture hall, like the humanities lecture hall or media theater, um, and my English teacher was my math teacher. And she was giving us a comprehensive calculus exam that had a time slot of five hours. And I fell asleep during the first two hours. I have no idea what that was about, but it was strange and I woke up from that dream pretty panicked. And I just couldn't go back to sleep and was fighting sleep from like 3.30 to 4.30. And yeah, exhausted this morning. But actually, now I'm fine, and I can't tell if it's the coffee working or the rush of filming this journal sesh. Boop. It's 6.30, and we've already finished two pages! And I know there aren't any rules, but I should probably pack it up because I've got stuff to do. But, okay. I'm just gonna just... Uh, jaw it. Stuff down, and maybe I'll come back later and elaborate. One had a panic attack yesterday that involved me trying to use my headphones to block out the sound of heavy bass and, um, noises from next door. Two, asking for permission to do things as a 26 year old in my own apartment as a sign of strict parents. But my parents weren't strict about what I asked permission for, which are things in the kitchen. Three, a sixth voice time on my mind. Ah thinking of, nope, can't. A, sub point, need to DM them because my package was delivered to Boulder. And that's all I can think of for now. Smell you later. Maybe.
yep <laughs> that's that's that um like i said it's a whole lot of mindless gibberish with some grammar errors misspellings random thoughts planting themselves when i'm mid-sentence literally writing about something else i could be embarrassed about what i wrote but what for i mean yeah i could use the excuse like i'm all foggy before the sun is up and before i've had my coffee but i don't uh, i won't I, I won't because this is just me and I don't care if other people think it's embarrassing. This video is meant to give those new, shy, kind of timid journalers some confidence in their writing and let them know that it is okay to look like an idiot inside of your own journal. I do it every day. It's great. <laughs> I'm just trying to get my thoughts out and clear my mind for the day ahead. It's a coffee chat with myself and it's slowing down in this life that just keeps speeding up and it all really is writing like no one is reading if you've made it this far into the video thank you so much for watching and listening if you enjoyed it give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing i'd really appreciate it and let me know in the comments below your whole thing about journaling do you journal do you keep a separate journal do you prefer morning or evening sessions, or do you just squeeze them in whenever you can? I'd love to hear about it. And, um, yeah, that's it. I will talk to you guys later.